Hey folks, how you doing? This is the 7th of November 2014. How you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast for Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Hey, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Lots of stuff going on in your area, I think. Hey, you know what? Speaking of which, if there's anything going on like events or whatever it is, protests, whatever you got, I don't care, art shows, whatever you got going on, send that to me, okay? It, it, uh, promotions are free on this show. Now, if you're selling something, that's advertising. That would help both of us out. So email me and ask me about that, okay? So anyway... Yeah, so if you got uh, something going on in your area, please let me know. Uh, more than happy to promote that for you. Promotions are free, okay? Just, I'll just you got something going on. Uh, it, again, you know, if you're selling something, that's advertising. So advertising rates on this show are really, really low. I'm not out to break your advertising budget. Please email me. We'll talk. Okay, free America radio at USA.com. Free America radio at USA.com. Go to the Wayne S. Pierce show dot Weebly dot com site and click on the sponsors page. Uh, and to be honest, I haven't been over there. <laughs> I haven't worked on the page for a while. So <laughs> so anyway, let me uh, let me go over there right now. And uh it's just go to the sponsors page, click on a little tab there above, and it says the rates right there. Now, those are going to change. So let me change as of today. Those are going to change. It's going to be one flat rate, okay? It's going to be one flat rate per month, all right? So not a big deal. I'm not out to break your advertising budget, okay? Okay. <laughs> it's it's going to be fine. Okay, it's going to be it's going to be just fine. Um so anyway, what's on today's show? What is what what is happening on today's show? A uh, lot of things actually, to tell you the truth. Um going to get into uh, some things here that really have bugged me for ages we're talking months and years and all of that okay and the one thing that i want to say is the um Squatters' rights. I was trying to remember that. What the hell they call these people? Squatters' rights. Okay, the um, the whole thing about squatters' rights is stupid. Okay, and I believe that it should be a felony, a class four felony, to be squatting in someone else's property. Period. Okay. That's just that's just the way it is. Mentalfloss.com has a pretty good explanation about this. Um, if the page would now load, damn Google Chrome, there it is. <laughs> anyway, mentalfloss.com. How do squatters' rights work? <clears throat> It goes into uh, all of this. It says the idea behind uh, it, it's adverse possession is what it's called. Uh, the United States, in the United States, squatters' rights isn't a list of specific rights, but refers to a specific form of adverse possession, a legal principle that we inherited from England and has been around in one form or another for ages. Adverse possession allows for real estate to exchange ownership without payment if someone occupies another's, uh, another person's property while meeting certain requirements uh, for a set amount of time without an owner getting rid of them. For example, if I build a fence way over my neighbor's property line and use them and maintain the land I've fenced off and my neighbor 
does nothing about it for a while, exactly how long depends on where we live, I may be able to claim that chunk of his property as my own if he does ever make a fuss. The idea behind adverse possession, the California Court of Appeals of the 3rd District wrote in 1979 decision, quote, is basically that land use has historically been favored over disuse and that therefore he who uses the land is preferred in the law to he who does not, even though the latter is the rightful owner. Hence, our laws of property have sanctioned certain types of otherwise unlawful taking of land belonging to someone else, unquote. The purpose of the court continues, uh, isn't, quote, to reward the taker or punish the person dispossessed, but to reduce litigation and preserve the peace by protecting a possession that has been maintained for a statutorily deemed sufficient period of time, unquote. While the principle is usually used by the courts to resolve property disputes like my hypothetical fence, squatters can also use adverse possession to gain ownership of the property they're squatting in if they play their cards right. Land grab. Adverse possession statutes vary from state to state and sometimes within states, but generally speaking, to acquire property by adverse possession, a squatter needs to possess the disputed property in, in a way that is actually open, notorious, exclusive, hostile, continuous for the statutory period of time. That is, they need to actually occupy and use the property in opposition of the actual owner's rights and claims in an open and visible way that makes it known to the owner that their property is being possessed and prevents others from using or occupying it. All of this has to be done for a set period of time, which varies between jurisdictions. In California, a squatter needs to possess a property for five years, while in New Jersey, they'd have to hang on to it for 30 years. If the squatter's possessions if the squatter's possession is interrupted during that period of time, say, by the actual owner attempting to take the possession or the squatter abandoning the property, the conti uh, continuity of it is broken and the squatter has to start again with the clock reset at zero. If they manage to meet all those requirements for the full amount of time and not get kicked out, they can claim ownership through adverse possession if any questions about ownership arise or go before the court. There you go. There you go. Adverse possession. We need to outlaw it, period, end of sentence. We need to outlaw adverse possession. We need to make it against the law for your neighbor to come over while you're on vacation for a month and or however long and take your property. We need to outlaw that. Make it against the law. Period. And you know how you do that and not spend any money and not waste the taxpayer's time or money or whatever? You take it off the books. Just eliminate it off the books. You don't need congressional approval. You don't need state house approval. No, no, no. You just walk in there, take a whiteout, and take it off the books. There you go. It's off. You no longer have any rights, squatters whatsoever, to do anything that you want to do. Guess what? It's now against the law. You have now stolen a piece of property, and you will go to jail. That's why I said make it a felony. Now, I have personal experience in this, indirect personal experience, because, uh, because <clears throat> well, in many other ways, I've heard this as well. And this is one thing I wanted to mention, and I just now remembered it, was the fact that I've known people who have been on vacation. I mentioned vacation earlier been on vacation for a month, month and a half, they come back, there's people in their house. They've changed the locks, they did all this, whatever. They did it right away, boom, boom, boom. It was like within a week, you know. 
and the deed went through, went to court, blah, 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 and they're using it against the owners, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're using it in opposition or in another way that the owner does not want it to be, and the deed and the court and everything, and these people got kicked out, okay? I've heard stories like that. And I've also heard the stories where squatters had more rights than the homeowner. So guess what? You don't own a damn thing. I can come up, get in your car, and take your keys, get in your car, and or get in your car, change the ignition, put in my own key, and drive off. It's now my car. It's called adverse possession. Okay? I mean, what kind of crap is this? When we can't even own anything anymore, where we're, we can walk out our door of our house and in a week have somebody living there you know, and we can't do a damn thing about it. Well, guess what? I just saw a video clip from a news uh, program. I can't remember exactly where it was. I think it was in Detroit. I, I'm, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, where the homeowner was moving into the home. They had sold their other home. They bought this home. They were moving in, but they were still living elsewhere because they were moving everything and yada, 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 doing all that stuff, right? So they found squatters in their new home. The news organization investigated. The news organization contacted the owners. The owners gave them the key and the deed to the house that was legally theirs, walked into the house, and the news organization caught the squatter stealing power from a neighbor's home. Well, now the news organization, with a police officer there, walked this person out of the house. The officer then arrested them for probation violation. This person had a rap sheet as long as your freaking arm, and boom, went to jail. That's the way it should be. Anybody coming into my home without my uh, invitation is now a squatter, and therefore, I, you know, if I'm gone for a month on vacation and I come back and I see you in my home without my invitation or without my approval, you're gone, and I'll make sure you're gone to jail to prison. You don't like it? Don't squat in my property. That's just the way it is. Now, here's the other thing, and here's where they get around this. In some cases, from what I've heard and from what I've read, you don't own the ground under your house. You don't own the ground under your house. You own the building, you own the dwelling, you own the shelter, but you don't own the ground under your house. That is how some squatters are getting away with it. You know, there's a lot of big process going into that, but, you know, ah, squatting rights. There is no right to squatters. That's called theft. Okay? Period. Don't like it? I don't care. The laws have to change to suit the citizens, not the criminals, period. And and I'm one who's a patriot. I will defend this country to, to the fullest capacity that I have with everything I am. And I will defend my neighbors and my friends and everybody else. But if you're my enemy and you come squatting on my property and you come trying to steal stuff out of my property... I'll be calling the police to bring a body bag. That's just the way it is. Don't like it? Don't do it. Now, 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 hold on. Some people might say that's wrong. I don't think so. Let me give you this scenario. I come to your house. I knock on your door. You open the door. I push the door in. I walk in. I grab your, you know, I go into your uh kitchen and i start cooking up dinner hey this is my house now i'm gonna do whatever i want what excuse me what are you gonna do you're gonna kick my ass out of the house aren't you simple that's simple you just show the squatters the deed the key and a police officer and say you got two choices either you can leave peacefully 
or I'll have this officer arrest you for theft. Don't like it? Don't care. Leave now. So, squatter's rights, or I don't even want to call it adverse possession is what it's called. That law, or that thing, that whatever opinion of a judge needs to go away. Okay? It, there is no law on the books that says somebody can come into your house and take over. No, there is no law in that. I don't care if it came from England or Bangladesh. It doesn't matter. Okay? It's called theft. Okay? You know what we do with thieves around here? Yeah, you know exactly what thieves need to be. Okay? They need to be in jail. That's where they need to be. But, adverse possession needs to be taken off the books. It's an opinion, much like the, you know, separation of church and state. It's an opinion of a judge. And it needs to be thrown out. Period. I would say this, that we have a new Congress now, but I think people need to be proactive in getting these politicians to understand one valuable thing that they need to screw into their head, and that is we the people rule, period. Okay, not the corporations, not Monsanto, not DuPont, not Microsoft. We the people rule. The politicians need to do exactly what we tell them to do. We don't want Agenda 21. We don't co want Common Core. We don't want any of that, and we need to get it out of our system now. Period. End of sentence. Don't like it? I don't care. We need to get this country back on the uh, straight and narrow, back on the right road, and we need to rebuild it by the entrepreneurs that built it before before the corporations came along going, hey, look, there's a, a company that is making a million dollars a year. Let's go do a hostile takeover of that company and build it in our image. What? No. <clears throat> Anybody remember the AT&T debacle back years ago? Went to federal court because they were a monopoly and they broke up into the little belt, you know, companies like Pacific Bell and, you know, all that. Remember that? Remember Microsoft was taken to court because everybody thought that was a monopoly? You know, antitrust laws, that kind of crap, right? Broke that up, didn't it? But what what happened? How did that happen? It was the people that got tired of the bull crap. It was the people that got tired of the of all of the crap going on and was proactive in developing a plan to push these companies back to stop taking over our lives. Well, we need to do that now. We need to do that today, the 7th of November, 2014. We need to do that right now, period. We need to tell our governors, either you do this or we'll vote your ass out in 2016. We don't care. We want somebody in to do exactly what we want. We're tired of this bull crap. First thing you need to do is get corporations out of the election process that's the first thing you need to do and about 90 percent of your problems go away right there well how is anything gonna get run well we need to get attorneys out of the election process too we need to get special interests and lobbyists out of the process well nothing will get you know nobody will be happy I'm not looking for, you know, I'm not looking to have my life ruined because of a corporation's ignorance of the rights that I have under the Constitution and Bill of Rights prior to 1871, period. Corporations need to shove it up their ass and get out of the election process. That's the way it's going to be. And you and I have to be proactive in making that happen. Is it a... It, it, is it going to happen in the next 10 years? No, let's make it happen in the next two, okay? Let's make it happen next month, all right? By the way, did you know that you can go to court and file your own, uh, your own uh, information? I forgot what they call that in the court, but you can file against the federal government on your own in court. Yeah, go talk to your court clerk. 
your county court or your city court, whatever it is you're dealing with there in your area, and ask them. You can call them up. You got the number. Go look it up on the Internet. <laughs> the county clerk for, you know, whatever. And uh, find out, can I file a lawsuit on my own or file a brief or something in the courts for the federal government to see, to show them how, you know, disappointed I am? Isn't that under the First Amendment? Petition of grievance? Isn't that, can't we do that? Well, again, go ask your county clerk, uh, county clerk that. Find out if you can and, and all that pertinent information there. I'm not an attorney. That's why I say go ask your your, your courthouse about this. Anyway, I'm going to take a little break, and uh, I'll be back. And, uh, hey, stick around, folks. I got more. Hey, uh, yeah, TGIF. Talk to you guys in a bit. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce from the Free America Radio Network. Come join me on The Views Express Live, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on freeamericaradio.us. Tiny, I'm the host of Big Tiny's Always and More, and we're playing music that you just love to hear from the 50s to the 90s. So check us out Monday through Friday and see what we're playing right here on Springer.com. have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a new world order, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be. Those who will learn nothing from history are condemned to repeat it. This we are doing in the Americas today. We have a real chance at this new world order. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. truth without all the BS. This is The Wayne S. Pearson Show. Hey folks, welcome back. This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show right here on the 7th of November 2014. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. How you doing? Yes, Reverend. Yes, I am a legal, real reverend. I say that because some people then say, well, you're one of them fake ones. Uh, really? Yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever you want to believe, you just go ahead and do that. ULCHQ.com. You can email them. Yes, ULCHQ.com. Email them. Ask them about me. It's okay. Yeah, not a big deal. <clears throat> anyway, what more can I talk about? Let's go to, uh, well, let's do this, shall we? Let's do this. Let's go to Infowars.com because there's some things on there I saw yesterday, and it's probably already off. But let's see what they got going on today. Hollywood Source, producer of new TWA 800 movie, received threat. Okay? Ukraine says Russian tanks have crossed the border. There goes your war, folks. 
former ECB, European Union head, bullied Ireland into bailout. Chicket, quote, held a loaded gun to their heads, unquote. Let's go to this Hollywood uh, report here from InfoWars. Hollywood source, producer of new uh, TWA 800 movie, received threats. Makers of conspiracy thriller, which links CIA to crash, told it would be in their best, uh, quote-unquote, best interest to stop filming. A Hollywood source has told InfoWars that make that makers of the upcoming movie Courier uh, 10 Courier 10, a drama about the 1996 crash of TW8 Flight 800, were visited on the set by two men who threatened the producer that it would be in his best interest to stop filming. TW800 exploded and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean on July 17, 1996, just 12 minutes after takeoff from JFK International Airport. Although a National Transportation Safety Board investigation concluded that the plane crashed as a result of a fuel tank explosion caused by a short circuit, conspiracy theories about the incident have raged for years, with some blaming a terrorist attack on or a U.S. naval missile launch gone awry for the downing of the airline. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the plot Courier 10, uh, which stars Transformers actor James C. Burns, quote-unquote, links the CIA to the crash. InfoWars is contact, was contacted by a source who has been involved in numerous Hollywood projects, and although he wishes to remain anonymous, he subsequently confirmed that he worked as a key grip throughout the production of the movie, a grip. You know what a grip is for you uh, actors out there, for you film people out there, a grip, you know what a grip is? Yeah, you know the cameras that you have and, you know, you know the wires that are connected to the cameras and all. A grip is a grunt, basically. <laughs> they go around and just help out. But somebody kept their ears open, huh? Quote, I can tell you the producer and the writer were on edge during filming. Uh, unquote. He writes, quote, I was there when they once got visited by two men dressed in plain clothes that arrived in an unmarked car with license plates that I have never seen before. They refused to identify themselves, but told the producer, quote, that it would be in his best interest to stop filming, unquote. I immediately walked away when I heard that. Appears the filmmakers obtained more concrete material on the White House and the CIA being directly involved with shooting down TW8-800, along with how and why, unquote. The source went on to describe how the entire production of the movie was shrouded in secrecy and that the crew, quote, never knew where we were filming from one day to the next, unquote. Quote, we met in a common area each morning and then were driven to a secret filming locations. We didn't even know who the actors were until they showed up on the set. Normally, we have a full cast list and a full script to prepare. Very unusual production, unquote, he adds. The source also said that he and other crew members were scared and nervous about their involvement with the movie. Last year, a group of TW8 project uh, a group called the TWA Project filed a petition with the NTSB demanding the probe into the crash be reopened, asserting that, the, that a, quote, high-velocity right-moving explosion, unquote, consistent, consistent with a missile was responsible for bringing down the airliner. The NTSB refused to resume the investigation. Last month, the First Circuit Court ruled that the CIA did not have to release radar analysis pertaining to the crash or names or eyewitnesses, uh, names of eyewitnesses who described a streak of light rising up f to the plane just before it exploded. The case was brought by physicist Thomas Stalkup. Now, there's a documentary in this with David Knight uh, as well. Uh, giving his uh, view on this. I will put this up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page for all of you to take a gander at. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, yes, it was a missile. <laughs> what? what? TSA is going to come SWAT to me now or CIA or whoever? No, it was a missile. I mean, go look at the films. They're there, folks. Go look at all the evidence. The evidence leads to that conclusion. Hello, I saw the evidence. It's right there. Okay? All the pieces of the puzzle are put together. There you go. <clears throat> now, 
I also want to say this about conspiracy theories. First of all, there's no longer any theories. It's all out in the open now. Some of the stuff is still, you know, let's just put it this way. You walk into your kitchen, you know where your cereal is. You open up the cabinet, there it is. You know where the milk is. You open up the fridge, there it is. You pull out the milk. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't know I had that in this part of the kitchen, in that cupboard that I never had gone to in many months. Who put that there? It's no longer a conspiracy theory, folks. There's no longer any conspiracy theories. It's all out in the open. And and you know for a fact that this is true. Go look at it yourself. And don't sit there and yell at me and throw stuff at your computer screen and tell me I'm off my rocker. No, I've been researching shadow government since I was in high school. 30 some odd years ago. Okay? So don't tell me this stuff doesn't exist. Okay? When I heard the words from General... Uh, uh, what, what's that guy? Um, Smedley Butler. When I heard his words, I'm thinking, there's something wrong here, folks. When I'm hearing that uh, President Carter wanted information to Area 51, he was shut down. They said, no, sir, we can't give that to you. When he himself saw a UFO or what he would classify as the you know, definition of what a UFO is. Now, let me tell you this. There are no longer any conspiracy theories. It's out in the open, folks. It's right there in your face. And if you're going to ignore it and deny it, uh, you can pack your little ditty bag up and go find a hole in the wall in a cave somewhere in the mountains and just go live because... You don't need to be, you know, near humanity. You can just go off with your own preconceived, deluded ideas about everything and think everything's okay. Just bye-bye. Take a fishing pole. You're going to need to eat. You know, and I say that. I'm being, you know, sarcastic. But I, if you're going to ignore something that blatant out in front of your eyes... I don't know what to tell you. You got something going on in your head that you just... its I'm just saying. Just putting it out there. Stoplights are at an intersection for a reason. The stop sign there that down at the end of your street is there for a reason. I would think about it, folks. <clears throat> Josh Ernest tells Fox News criticizing Obama not, quote, good for the country, unquote. Economist, financial collapse will cause civil unrest to erupt in America by 2016. Let's go read that one. I'm still at Infowars.com, by the way. Rampant corruption combined with economic woes to spark revolution. By Paul Joseph Watson, today. Posted today. I want to, uh, uh, I'm going to put this up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show uh, Facebook page, by the way, so you guys can look at that as well. Economist Martin Armstrong is predicting that rising resentment against the status quo as a result of the economic inequality is likely to cause a serious political uprising before 2016. Quote, it looks more and more like a serious political uprising will erupt in, by 2016 once the economy turns down. That is the magic ingredient. Turn the economy down and you get civil unrest and revolution, unquote, writes Armstrong. In making the uh, forecast, the economist cites the case of 90-year-old World War II veteran Arnold Abbott, who is being targeted by authorities in Fort Lauderdale by defying a newly passed city ordinance that criminalizes feeding the homeless. An example says Armstrong uh, of how an example says uh, Armstrong of how quote unquote laws in the U.S. have simply gone nuts. Armstrong, who correctly predicted the 1987 Black uh, Monday crash as well as the 1998 Russian financial collapse, asserts that the downfall of the system will be its inability to gauge the anger that Americans currently feel towards their government. In other words, the government is underestimating our resolve and underestimating our intelligence. Okay? 
That, that's, that's what he's saying. Quote, you just cannot make this stuff up, and the Democrats cannot figure out that the people are getting pissed off at who is ever in office. Okay, excuse me, that was a question. Let me read that again. <laughs> my, my grammar teacher is just, my English teacher is rolling over in her grave. You just cannot make this stuff up, and the Democrats can't figure out that the people are getting pissed at whoever is in office? And what about the police, unquote, asks Armstrong. Quote, is this just turning into thugs with badges who just enforce whatever law some nut job politician writes what if they passed a herod type law to curb population and de decree that everyone must kill their firstborn when does reason ever return to the police force these days uh, they no longer protect the people they protect the politicians against the people unquote that's exactly what they do folks as we as infowars reported back in august the u.s army is preparing for civil unrest in the united states a 132-page document, look this stuff up, folks, startpage.com, look this up, entitled U.S. Army Techniques Publication 3-39.33 Civil Disturbances, outlines how troops may be required to deal with, quote-unquote, unruly and violent crowds where it is, quote-unquote, necessarily to quell riots and restore public order, unquote. I have that publication, folks. I have that publication, okay? It's in a PDF form, okay? I just searched it right now. The first link is a PDF form. Go get it and read it. I encourage you to do that. Please. Thank you. Okay? Because it is to your benefit to do so. Continuing on with this Infowars.com, uh, Paul Joseph Watson article. Right at riots which rocked Ferguson, Missouri earlier this year and threatened to reignite uh, should uh, Officer Darren Wilson be acquitted. Illustrate how single events can spark sustained social unrest. Let me interject something here. I saw an old, uh, I think it was an old uh, Twilight Zone, uh, a newer uh, Twilight Zone, the remake or whatever with, I guess, Forrest R Whitaker was hosting it or something like that. And it showed within a six-hour period of time, a small neighborhood, the power went out, all this, and a neighbor's lights were still on, and everybody's got these thoughts of, oh, that person has a generator, and blah, 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 they got food, ah, and they just became very unruly, okay? And the end of the segment of that Twilight Zone story showed the military shut off the power into that neighborhood, but kept one light on to for four behavioral experiment hmm sound familiar facebook continuing with this paul joseph watson article at infowars.com however more widespread dis dislocation is only likely to occur in the aftermath of an economic collapse which impacts a huge number of americans as we have seen in numerous countries across europe including in belgium just today crippling austerity measures combined with anemic economic growth have set the stage for violent unrest in a february 2013 article entitled why the banking elite want right Riots in America, Infowars.com, outlined why the political class is perfectly content to engineer and exploit social unrest as a means of paving the way for the IMF to engage in its tired and tested, or excuse me, tried and tested method of asset stripping and looting of a nation. With polls showing some 74% of Americans already angry or dissatisfied with the government, further economic hardship could prove to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Okay? Let me tell you right now. Let me inform you right now. The tighter the economic grip they have on you, the more you're going to get pissed. It's time we start 
pushing back, not violently, peacefully, but with a credible threat of the Second Amendment backing us up. Do you understand that? I learned that from Pete Santilli over at the Guerrilla Media Network. You can peacefully protest with the credible threat of the Second Amendment backing you up. Go for it. We have to push back, not in a violent way, because that's what they want, because that is their, that would be their way if we violently defend ourselves and go and just do violent, unruly things. Their next step in that parade is declaring martial law and suspending the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and therefore we are going to be living in a lawless country. Do you really want that? That means the cops can break into your house, not just knock on your door and come on. No, no, no. They're going to kick down your door and take whatever they want. Remember Hurricane Katrina? Remember how the, the most prominent people in that area were also confronted by the militarized law enforcement and had their guns taken away, eventually given back to them. But still, do you understand where this is going? Okay, do you understand it? I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back. Don't go away. If you want to email me, you can. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. Be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome to the Digital Maze. You have entered into an infinite space of virtual reality. Do not let yourself be consumed by it. Seek the doors that will lead you back to your true reality. Do not trust your senses. This is only a simulation of experiences meant to disrupt your current cycle of digital media consumption. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. A new world order, a new world order, a new world order, not the law of the jungle, a new world order, not the law of the jungle. This is only a simulation. A new world order, not the law of the jungle. We have a real chance at this new world order. Eastland Radio Repertory Theater is looking for you. Are you a voice actor? Do you want to hone your abilities? Please send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. We are currently looking for voice actors to fill certain character roles in an ongoing radio play in development. Please send your audition clips. To Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce from the Free America Radio Network. Come join me on the Views Express Live, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on freeamericaradio.us Folks, how you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce right here for the 7th of November, 2014. Are you good? Are you happening? It's Friday. You got a weekend ahead of you. I know. I know. I know. I know. The weekend is here. Yes. Hey. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little something, something going on. Let me, let me take some coffee there. Last segment of the show, I want to uh, focus uh, your attention, I hope. Or let me direct your attention to another Infowars.com article. Now, I'm going to say this, and and, and people say, oh, Alex Jones and Infowars, oh, they make stories up. Really? Prove it. I don't want to hear any more, you know, 
here's a personal note for people. You don't believe me? Prove it. <laughs> How simple can I make it for you? Okay? I don't have to prove anything to anybody. And that's your out. Yeah. Th that's your excuse not to do the work to just sit on your ass and do nothing. Well, I don't have to get up and protest against anything because, you know, I think that everything's just fine. Yeah, and you're a stupid liberal. Got it? I have talked to people who are self-avowed, self-proclaimed socialists and Marxists and communists. They're all overstocked in California. You know. And let me tell you something. Those are the stupidest people on the face of the planet. Their little worlds are filled with little delusional preconceived ideas that they have absolutely no clue what anything else is because they can't break out of that, that, that whole paradigm that they live in. So on a personal note, don't like what I say? You don't agree with it? You want to sit there and throw rocks at me and contradict me? Well, guess what? You're going to have to prove yourself right. I don't care if you ever show me what proof you have. I mean, either way, we can discuss it. We can talk about it. We can look at it. Or you don't have to show it to me. It doesn't matter. You're going to have to prove yourself right because, hey, the stuff that I look at, that I find, I go through it and say, that does not sound right. Let me go look that up. Oh, that sounds okay. Well, I'll still look that up. So in defense of independent and alternative media, there are certain things in that arena that even I disagree with, okay? But I still go look it up. I don't go and and say hey alex you're making up this story here's the information or hey pete santilli here's the information hey josh tolly here's the information i disagree with you i don't do that i could but i choose not to you know what i choose to do prove myself right i look at the information and examine it and say okay now i'm going to put out the truth I'm going to put out the facts as much as I can see them at this point. It's real freaking simple. So anybody that wants to say two things, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, or, or the other little uh, just insane excuse for not doing any work to research anything is everything's just fine. If you, if you far-left liberal fascist people want to continue to say that, you go right ahead and live in your deluded world with your preconceived ideas. You just go right ahead and do that. You're wrong and you're going to fail, but you, know, you just go ahead and do that, all right? So anyway, that's the way it is. So, Infowars.com, another story here. One of the big stories probably is going to be on the in the state-run media, the mainstream media, and it's this. As soon as the page decides to want to load, uh, Ukraine says Russian tanks have crossed the border. Claim made after vote was held in Donsk People's Republic on Sunday. A Paul uh, Kurt Nimmo. Uh, article from today. The government of Kiev has once again accused Russia of sending tanks into eastern Ukraine. Although unconfirmed, let me say that again, although unconfirmed, the Ukrainian military says 32 tanks and 30 trucks crossed into the uh, Luhansk region where rebels opposed to the government in Kiev are making a stand. Citizen journalists, however, claim to have video showing the deployment. Hmm... It's a two minute and 55 second video. I'm going to put this up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page so you guys can go look at it. Okay. Some people don't like the fact that I tell people that, you know, they need to go out and prove themselves right. They don't like that because, my God, they may, they may have to admit they're wrong. 
<clears throat> Continuing, quote, the deployment continues of military equipment and Russian merc- mercenaries to the front lines, unquote, military spokesman, uh, yeah, uh, told a, the BBC. In August, the Ukrainian government claimed Russia had invaded the country. NATO used the... Uh, unverified invasion as a pretext when it announced troop deployments in Eastern Europe. NATO released satellite imagery of what it said were tank and truck columns crossing into the Ukraine. Critics argued it was not clear if the images were of military vehicles inside Russia or the Ukraine. Donsk separatist vote. On Sunday, a vote was held in a Donsk People Republic and separatist leader Alexandra Alexander I uh, don't know how to pronounce his last name, sorry, was sworn into office. Russia said it, quote, respects, unquote, the vote after previously stating it supported it. Quote, we support the continuation of the Minsk, uh, Minsk process and advocate holding another meeting of the contact group, unquote, said Russian foreign policy advisor Yuri Yushakov. The Minsk process is a reverent reference to a ceasefire agreement uh, reached in the capital of uh, Belarus on September 5th. Earlier this year, separatist leaders declared victory over a large number of residents in Luhansk and Donsk region, voted in a Crimea-style referendum calling for the establishment of people's republics. On May 24, the two separatist republics signed an agreement creating a confederation called the Federal State of Novorossiya, or New Russia. So there you go. The uh, article is up on the uh, Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. And uh, I, I, I have to say this. How can people literally live with themselves knowing, knowing they are wrong? When their excuses and their, you know, reasoning behind whatever it is they're doing is completely bogus. Now, in this case with the Ukraine, it's very much appropriate for these people to rise up against the corrupt system. It is, and and this is happening all over the world in various areas uh, of Greece and of Tunisia and Egypt, I mean, the corrupt governments put in by the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Bilderberg Group, you know, all this, these corrupt governments are destroying, number one, the livelihood of people, how they make a living, and also the freedom, peace, and security of of those nations, because they want war, because, you know, there's profit in war, and these people know it. These corporations know it. Now, to me, this is a, uh, uh, just to me, just me, just looking at it, observing it as I do, would have to say that these corrupt governments need to understand one very valuable thing. Peace, freedom, liberty, and security in a nation can help you profit 10 times to 100 times more if you allow the people to do what they need to do. Okay? That's just the way it is. Because now that we're globally connected in commerce, do you think you're ever going to lose, you know, it, 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 do you ever think you're going to have more loss in your in your ledger than you are profits? No, you're not. You allow the people to do what they need to do. You give them the peace, freedom, liberty, and security in their nation that they need. You allow them the God-given rights that they have and you leave them alone and let them do what they want okay yeah sure you got laws pertaining to you know murder and rape and you know all this yeah here in the united states each state needs to increase those penalties under those laws not write more laws suppressing the law-abiding citizen period that, that's just, I mean, everybody is yelling that. Increase the penalties. Don't, it, don't make new laws. Okay? But hey, you know, some people say, well, criminals have rights too because they're human beings. No, they don't. They committed a crime. 
whatever, whatever crime it is, I don't give a crap if it's dog fighting to theft to murder, you've lost your God-given rights. You are now under, you are now having to pay the penalty under the law, period. A lot of people say, well, you can't do that. These people have a, no, 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 excuse me. I've been in courtrooms before, folks. All right. I've been called the jury duty, folks. I've been in courtrooms. I've heard people. Do you understand me? I've talked to people in Stockton, California, who were on jury duties, who were lawyers, who were that. I've talked to people. I've overheard people telling me, not overheard, it's like I was standing there, but I've talked to people who have talked to me that have said that in the defense attorney's office, of course paid for by the state and the taxpayers, the defense attorney was saying, this guy is guilty of sin, I don't even know why I'm defending this guy, or this person, or that group of people. So, what the hell, if you're if you've committed a crime, let's go to court. Let's figure it out. Not so much whether or not they did it. They wouldn't be in court if they didn't. Let's figure out the penalty for it. Well, that's not the way justice works. Yes, it does. It's either that or vigilante justice. What do you want? Look what happened in 18, 17 and 1800s. <laughs> you know, seriously, folks. We need now here's here's the thing the people are going the people you and I we the people are going to change things only when we're proactive in pushing against the wall of corruption that is about ready to tear down our house do you understand that we're the ones inside the house protecting ourselves and the government's outside trying to demolish it when I say government, I'm talking about the corporations that run Washington, D.C., and all of those people involved, okay? Because that's who's running Washington, D.C. We got, a, we, we got a, uh, an, a puppet in a suit at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that has absolutely no idea what the hell he's doing. He's a minion of the, the corporations, and the corporations are being run and told what to do. So, you know, <laughs> keep going up the ladder, folks. You'll find out who's running this whole ball game. Okay? I don't know, folks. I mean, people tell me, well, you know, you want laws that are, you know, stringent. You know, too stringent. People have to have freedom. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know what I want? I want reasonable, rational laws that protect law-abiding citizens of their God-given rights, period. You, you murder somebody, you go to jail, or you get you know the needle in your arm. That's simple. How can we not figure that one out? How can we not do that? Well, because they have a right to a defense. They do. They wouldn't be in prison accused of and charged with murder if they didn't do it. They did it, period. The defense attorney is trying to get him off on special circumstances. Go look that one up, folks. That, there's a whole list in the Black's Law Dictionary of special circumstances, and I'm putting air quotes around there, okay? Go look that up. He's guilty by reason of insanity. No, he's guilty, period. Well, you just... Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. We need to clean out our prison system. The prison industrial complex exists only for one thing. To undercut the, the uh, labor in the United States. Go look it up. The prison industrial complex. Go look that up. Startpage.com. Folks, hey, I can go on and on and on, but I won't. <coughs> Excuse me. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show dot Weebly dot com site. If you want to sponsor the show, please do. I would love it. If you want to donate to it, that's cool too. Hey, you can do that. Get your emergency food supply before the next man made or natural disaster happens. The Wayne S. Pierce Show dot Weebly dot com site. Click on the link. 
and get it today and help out your family and Free America Radio Network all at the same time. Folks, TGIF, I'm out of here. Have a good day.